Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We can um, take a moment to quiet our hearts. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out any tension or worries that are from your day, any joys or excitements. We pray that, Lord, you would come into our hearts and help us to hear you. Help us to enter into these moments of um, the way of the cross with you and to know you and to know your love. Lay any worries or concerns at the foot of the cross. And just take time to be with Jesus right now. Okay, so we are going to be journeying with Jesus on the way of the cross today. We journeyed with him last week through his trial, and we know that he is already in so much pain. We know that he has been through such a horrible scourging. He's had the crown of thorns smashed onto his head. He's already near the point of death. And at this moment is the moment that Jesus is given his cross beam to carry in humiliation on the road to Calvary. Imagine that the streets are still crowded by travelers. Place yourself in the midst of those travelers. Perhaps, um, you're journeying into the city for the feast of Passover. Perhaps you're in the middle of the crowd that is walking along with Christ. We pray, I'm gonna have to pause and get this dog. We pray that we can be with Jesus at this moment and journey along with him. So as Jesus is carrying the cross, there's a group of travelers that are following along behind him, watching this show that has become the way of the crucifixion. And as he goes, he stumbles along. He's too tired to even hold the crossbeam on his own. So the soldiers goad a man named Simon, who was journeying into the city from outside. And they ask him to stand behind Jesus and to help carry the cross. Put yourself in the place of Simon right now. What would it be like to be coming into a city to celebrate a feast and suddenly you find that you are being asked to be weighed down by the cross of another. The beautiful part of this is that Jesus has told people in the scripture to get behind him and carry his cross to follow me and that is exactly what Simeon does. So you see Simeon coming and being converted to Christ, even as he meets him, to carry his cross along with him. As Jesus continues on his journey, he meets the women of Jerusalem. Imagine a group of women wailing tears running down their face. But at that moment, Jesus turns to them and says, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. 
Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, then what will happen when it was dry? Jesus, even in his pain, mourns for the women and the experience that his people will have in the coming days as the persecutions for the, from the Romans get worse. As Jesus continues along his way, follow him on this journey. He gets to the top of this hill called Golgotha, the place that we know of as Calvary. He's laid down upon the cross beam and you can feel the nails go into his hands. One, two, three. The hammer strikes over and over. Painful blows as the nails go into his hand. The other hand is stretched out upon the cross. And again, one, two, three. The nails strike again and again and again. It is now the third hour of the day, around 9 a.m., and Jesus, our Lord, is hanging on the cross. Not long after they nail him to the cross, they, the soldiers bring him wine with gall to offer so that he can experience relief from some of the pain of the crucifixion. But our Lord refused that relief. He desired only to enter into the fullness of the crucifixion, to feel the depth of the pain, to offer his suffering for the salvation of each one of us. Jesus looks down and he sees the soldiers taking his clothing and dividing it among them. Among the crowd right now, there's probably a mood of laughter as they gamble to see who is the one that will be getting his tunic for which they are casting lots. People start going by and they mock him. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself. He saved others. Let him save himself. Why don't you just come down from the cross? You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down. And the final taunt that may have been enough to convince him, let the Christ come down that we may believe how much that taunt must have wrenched his heart, for he knew that even if he was to come down from the cross, there's no way that he would find these people believing any more than they already had. He had performed miracle after miracle. He had raised Lazarus from the dead. He had raised young children. But did people believe that? No. So while Christ could have let himself off the cross, he could have called upon the angels. He knew that this was the temptation of the devil, just as the devil had invited him to call upon the angels when he had been fasting in the desert for 40 days. Jesus continued on with his pain and his suffering. We know that Jesus had hanging next to him two robbers. They too were joining in the taunts. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself. But as the time passed and the day wore on, one of the robbers experienced a conversion. 
he says to the other man, do not, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man, he has done no wrong. This must have been balm to Jesus's wounds. At least one person recognizes his innocence in this moment. The thief cries out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Experience the mercy of the father. Experience the mercy of the son, as he says, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our Lord is hanging on the cross at this moment. He's in such deep, deep pain. He can barely breathe because of the weight of his body weighing him down. And yet he has mercy on this thief. Today you will be with me in paradise. What a generous Lord that we have. Sitting at the foot of the cross are one of Jesus' disciples, John, as well as Mary, his mother, Mary, the wife of Clophis, and Mary Magdalene. What comfort must they be feeling? What comfort must they be offering our Lord to have just a few of his followers and to have his mother there with him at the foot of the cross? Place yourself with them. Jesus gives us all a final gift as he looks down upon this scene. He says to Mary, woman, behold your son. And to the beloved disciple whom we know as John, behold your mother. Mary becomes mother to us all in that moment. We can trust in her to give us comfort and to be with us just as she was with her son. And then as the sixth hour came, the hour that would have been somewhere around noon, complete darkness fell over the land. It was as if the whole world was mourning and weeping for the Lord. From the sixth to the ninth hour, from noon until three, this darkness covered the land. We hear Jesus suffering on the cross in these moments. As the ninth hour comes, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's in such pain and he feels the weight of the sins of the world weighing him down. In this weight, he feels utterly abandoned. But his trust never leaves him. As he nears his last moments, he cries out, I thirst. And the soldiers bring him a bowl of vinegar and they soak a hyssop branch, the same branch that was used to mark the doorposts of the Passover with the blood of the lamb. Then they give the hyssop branch and reach up and give vinegar to our Lord to drink, marking him as the lamb. And Jesus cries out, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. It is finished. And at this moment, 
he bows his head and gives up his spirit. Listen as Jesus takes his last ragged breath. Even in this moment, there is a mood of awe and sadness, a mood of conversion. As the centurion experiences a complete conversion of heart in this moment, truly, this man was the son of God. The crowd recognizes, surely this man is innocent. Even in his last breaths, Jesus draws people to himself. He calls us on to be saints and to proclaim in our own hearts, truly, truly, this man was the son of God. As the time for the end of the day drew near, the soldiers wanted to make sure that Jesus and the robbers were dead so that they could bury them. So they go up to Jesus to break his legs, but they find that he is already gone. Just as the lamb is not to have a bone broken, so Jesus did not have a bone broken. Instead, they pierced his side and out of it flowed blood and water. Place yourself just below Jesus right now. Allow yourself to be washed in the water and the blood of his mercy. He wants us there. He wants us to receive the mercy that he so abundantly pours out, even in his death. Just imagine it washing over you. Receive the gift that he would give. And with that, Jesus is taken down from the cross and borne away to his tomb. The people are in awe. There was the moment as he died that the temple veil was ripped in two, opening the face of God for us to see. The earth quaked and even the rocks split in answer to the death of this man in sorrow of what is going on. And in his final moments, the tombs of the dead are open and the dead are raised. Saints are seen walking around in answer to this great gift of salvation which comes from the Lord. Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift that you've given us. We thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made on the cross, for the immense suffering and the deep pain that you experienced. We love you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help us to love you more. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.